Welcome to Monday Night TPK. Hey, welcome back. This is Monday Night TPK. Thank you for listening. My name is Kyle, and I am DMing this Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition Real Play podcast. We're currently attempting to, to move through the Tomb of Annihilation. Uh, around me at the table, I've got four people who are just so, so eager to be here. Matt, um, just how eager are you? I'm not, like, ecstatic, but I'm glad to be here. Good. I want you to be glad to be here. Well, All right, Ryan. How, how, how eager are you to be here? Oh, I'm just great. I do have a complaint, though. What, what, what's going on? You said we're going through the Tomb of Annihilation. I haven't seen any tomb. We've seen jungle and river. No tomb. I haven't seen any annihilation either. Oh god! I feel lied to. <laughs> no, no, there was okay. an annihilation. All right, just cool. Wasn't a <laughs> cool, cool. So uh, gloves come off. <laughs> Got it. Let's see what happens. Sam, um, how eager are you to be here? Less eager than I was two seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Gilly Pie won't survive this next episode anyway. I am now okay. more excited. <laughs> Great. Good for you. Dana, mm -hmm. are you eager to be here? Uh, no, but Rixer is. Rixer is? Yeah, he's pumped. Sweet. How pumped is he? Like, super pumped. Super I mean, pumped? Have you seen his biceps? I, uh, he's a beefcake. In, in, my mind, in my mind's eye, I have seen Rixer, Rixer yeah. and his biceps. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, cool. So, uh, Sam, yeah. um, I heard I heard a rumor that you tend to keep some pretty thorough notes. You know, I have heard that rumor too. Let's see if it's true. Shall we? We shall. Okay. So, in episode 23, we started out back on the river with no foreseeable problems. A plus. Iku and Gilly talked about the Oracle, and Iku recommended a place to camp for the night, and the group followed along with her recommendation and started to set up camp. Uh, Motwood went fishing, and Rixer saw that he needed a little bit of help, so Rixer went to go help him out. Um, then Motwood got some worms to fish with. Uh, Montwood ended up catching a 20-pound fish, which we ate for dinner. Uh, while Montwood was fishing, uh, Gilly did some work uh, learning more about the black sphere that she got. She learned it was not magical, but you can focus magic abilities through it. Uh, therefore, it's able to be used as a spell focus, and it is a piece of onyx with a maze card on it, and it's worth about 75 gold pieces. Then night fell, and creatures of the darkness began to make noises. After setting up camp, the group realized that uh, we didn't buy tents. <laughs> so that was a thing. Uh, after some discussions throughout the group, bedtime happened. First watch was quiet. Second watch, a little animal was present. Third watch, Brill heard an animal a boar ran through camp, and more things started approaching. Everyone wakes up! Zombies approach! It's zombie fighting time. Roll initiative. Zombies crowd, uh, crowded rather, around Iku and Rixer. Iku blessed us. Montwood turned the undead away from us. The zombo fight continued. Rixer went down. The zombies were dead. And Montwood brought Rixer back up. And Gilly went around spreading healing light to the party. And that is where we ended. Cool, cool. I think the only thing, um, I think we discussed this after we after we entered the play, you didn't have your notes, is you guys leveled up. Yes. Mm -hmm. You hit level three. Mm -hmm. And that's super exciting. 
Uh, do you guys want to tell me what's new with your characters? Sure. So, Rickster gained uh, max hit points for the level. So now I'm at 34. Um, and then also uh, gained a new skill proficiency. And then um, uh, choosing to be a samurai has a feature called Fighting Spirit. So I can get advantage on weapon attacks. Cool. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Ryan, what's new with Mawood? I rolled minimum on my <laughs> HP. <laughs> All right. Um, clerics actually get their features um, right at level one, so it's I got some new domain spells: uh, Gentle Repose, Ray of Enfeeblement, and I got my second level spell slots. Sweet, Matt. What's new with Brielle? Uh, I did not roll HP. I take the base that I am uh, allowed to get because I don't like one. Chicken is what? I am chicken. <laughs> I don't want a one. <laughs> And I am okay with that. Uh, but at third level, she gets to take her path. Uh, and I chose Monster Slayer. So she's got a new domain, or a new uh, spell for protecting from good and evil. She also has Hunter Sense and Slayer's Prey. Ooh, that's a bunch of new stuff. Mm hmm. Very cool. Yep. Yeah. And Sam, what is new with Gilly? Lots of new things for Gilly. So as a life cleric, jumping from two to three is always exciting because you go from three level one spell slots to four level one spell slots and two level two spell slots. Ooh, that is a whoa. three spell slot difference. It's pretty beefy. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. It's yeah. great. As Ryan rechecks his books. <laughs> yep. uh, I also have, now that I have second level spell slots, I have some second level spells of Lesser Restoration and Spiritual Weapon. And I got to pick another spell, so I chose Sanctuary. Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ryan's like, whoa! Yeah. More spells! <laughs> it's the best to jump. <laughs> As a cleric, especially life cleric, you struggle for level one and two. Once you make the jump to three, life gets a little bit easier. Very good, very good. So <laughs> I see what you yeah, did there. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 missed I think that was unintentional, out. but yeah. It was yeah, like, thanks, thanks. I was going to take credit for it, but... Uh... All right, cool. Um, <laughs> so we we more or less left off. Uh, you guys had, you guys had uh, just finished defeating your zombies. Um I had you level up a little bit, a little bit early. Uh, officially, you guys haven't really finished your break or whatever here, but I will tell you, there's not anything else gonna be coming for the rest of the night. Yay. Um, so there's dead bodies littering the ground all the way around you, oh, what a man. like all yeah. over the place. Do you guys have any intentions to do anything about that? Uh, since some people are going back to sleep, uh, Brielle will just kind of pull them off to the side and start piling them up. Okay. Get them out of the way and out of the camp. Push them more towards the, the woods. Okay. So um, people are going back to their sleep, and as, as you're um, moving the bodies one by one, there are, there are 10 of them, so it's going to take, take a little yeah. bit of time. Um, one thing that's very, very easy to notice is one of the bodies has a very uh, well maintained uh, war hammer that had been like strapped to the belt. The zombie wasn't using it, almost like it didn't know how. Right. Um, so you find that. And one of the bodies uh, would, just because you're getting so close to all of them, would be noticeably less decomposed and gross than the others. Okay. Um, and it also doesn't have a, uh, a triangle on its forehead. It was acting just like all the other Zambos. But, but, no uh, but no triangle and a much fresher condition than the rest. Um, when she notices this, she'll kind of look through, after she gets them kind of all kind of piled up, uh, take a gander at all of their foreheads and see how many of them exactly don't have a triangle. That, that is the only Just one. Just the one. Just the one. Okay. And he looks pretty fresh. Um... Could I roll a medicine check to see how decomposed he would be? Sure. To see how many days ago maybe he died? That's not bad. Uh, let's see, medicine is plus one, so 17. 
That's pretty good. Uh, seeing if I, how does my are you trained in Arcana at all? Arcana, no. You're not trained in. Okay. No. Um. So I have a plus two intelligence. So it, it looks. So you got seventeen on the med check. You would have. You would guess that it might only be. I don't know, a week or two old. Um, so there, it, there is some, some definitely some signs of decomposition, but you don't have like large, large patches of just totally falling off skin. Right. Um, it's, uh, it's clothing and stuff is very, very, very heavily tattered, almost like it's been just running through the underbrush for this whole time. So it's, you know, and it does have a lot of scrapes and cuts that almost look like they could go with just running through brush and sticks okay. and maybe okay. fending off dinosaurs and that kind of stuff. But the overall picture, I mean, yeah, a couple weeks, probably. Yeah. Um, and that one also has a, uh, a very, very um, fancy, I guess, scarf wrapped around its neck. Uh, the one end of it has gotten very, very tattered where it's kind of like drug behind it. Uh, but it's definitely like a very fine silk scarf with kind of a green leaf motif oh. woven in through it. Leaf motif. A leaf oh. motif. She didn't know to pick that scarf up. Is it, it? It's probably a little tattered. Not like horrible. um, most of it's in pretty good condition, except like I said, one end of it. Uh, which had kind of like fallen behind the zombie, like maybe as it had moved, would catch on things, catch on and it was it's a little bit frayed. But like the front, like well, the other end, which was kind of courage. like. I'm sorry, what, Dana? Said it was a little bit afraid. Oh, yeah, a little, a little bit afraid. afraid. <laughs> but on the whole, it seems to be in decent condition. Decent condition. Okay. Um, she currently wears a red scarf. Um, I think she's gonna pull off her scarf that she's got and wrap that around her waist. She's going to take that new green one and put it on him. It definitely smells face. like rotting flesh. Oh, I'm sure it does. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> She's just going to kind of take a, and then walk over to the water and take a look and see what it looks like on her. And then she'll judge from there, take it off, and then throw it in a canoe so she can wash it later. Okay. And she'll put her other one back on. Cool. Cool, cool. Do you, so that's all you do with these bodies? Is yeah, of... she just gets them away from the camp so that okay. any of the rotting smell isn't as bad and people can sleep. So yeah, the rest of the night passes uh, peacefully. People are able to get there. Um, if they haven't already done so, you know, get get, get full effects of uh, long rest. Um, officially, this is where your level up is going to really hit. Etc, uh, etc. Et um... I guess, you know, I guess Iku actually probably would have helped you move the bodies, too. Oh, okay. And come to think of it. And then once uh, once they're done, um, everyone else is going to probably go back to sleep. Or, well, while, while everyone else goes back is, is sleeping, Iku will kind of go back up into a tree. And um, you can kind of see her. She's going to kind of lean up against a branch. And she kind of closes her eyes. But okay. So, yeah. Um, morning comes. What are you guys doing in the morning as you kind of wake up and get around? Uh, normal mm -hmm. getting around things. <laughs> eat some food, pack up stuff. Okay, cool. You guys can eat your food, pack up, and I'm assuming you get back into your canoes. And Before we get back in our canoes, while everybody's kind of packing up, Brielle's going to get Gilly's attention and kind of pull her off to the side, away from everybody else. What's that? And, um... When she pulls her away, she already has a demeanor of that she's not happy about something. Uh oh. And she pulls her off to the side, and they she kind of aggressively is signing it, really. Um, she says, "You need to get control of Rixer with what happened yesterday, with the sting stingers, Sturges. Sturges. Getting those, they're getting their attention, and then zombies coming at night. We could have died if we had to fight both of those. Yes, I agree. 
can't have him running around screaming, drawing in the attention of everything else. We are going to die. Yes. I, I agree. Okay. So it's going to be your responsibility to control him because I can't talk to him. Yeah. Okay. I got it. And then it. she's going to march off and then start pulling a canoe towards the river. Uh, Gilly, like, takes a gulp <laughs> because... Managing people has not been something Gilly has done. <laughs> He's worked in a team of two people, not in a group very often, uh, unless it was under stressful cir- circumstances, but we won't talk about that now. <laughs> uh, hey, Rixer. Hey, Gilly. Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Oh, okay, yeah, we can talk right now, as Rixer's, like, stuffing his things into a bag. Okay. Well, I just... You hear a loud thump as she throws that warhammer in the canoe. (laughs) I just wanted to let you know, I think you were trying to be funny at the mazes yesterday. Yeah. But, like, we can die, so we can't make jokes. Because dying's not funny. Yeah. I I know. I, I don't know. It's just want to be friends. We're friends. Have fun together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Same. Maybe when we're out of the jungle and we're back in the city, we can have more fun, fun, fun time together. Okay. But now, now we're on a mission. Right. We got right. serious on the mission. Yeah. Okay. I can do that. Yeah. I, I knew you could. I knew. I knew you could. I know you can. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> While this is going on, uh-huh. would I be able to notice the mound of zombie corpses? Uh, yeah, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> I'm just asking. I mean, like, this... you you knew they were there last night. Mm-hmm. So, like, you were awake for last watch. Yeah. So you were awake probably while I was moving them. You just probably, yeah, probably doing your light work or whatever for the mm-hmm. last whatever. Just resting up. Yeah. Um. Hundred percent. Um, I have something I can do with them, but I need to make sure a couple things. I didn't know Malin was like that. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's keep this, like, PG-13, PG like... That means I'm all enough for it. Super, super light in the honor department if we have to. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, Kyle. Basically, are they situated in such a way that... If they would somehow catch on fire, the fire would not spread and consume the entire jungle. <laughs> Give me a intelligence check. I would have piled them, but the thing you're going to be worried about is how wet the ground is slash dry. But that's with the, the fact of how this place works. That's how, this is what the intelligence yeah. check is for. Yeah. If I can do this or not. Uh, 15. Yeah, 15. Okay. Yeah, um, you're in a jungle. It rains on a pre- pretty regular basis. Like, the ground's not, like, saturated right now, mm-hmm. but everything is very green, lush. You're going to have a hard time catching a lot of the ground stuff on fire. Okay, so it's almost always misting, isn't it? Um, to, like, an extent. Usually, actually, um, let me double-check my weather notes for her, but I think right now it is not raining or misting at all. Correct. There is no precipitation right now whatsoever. But it is very hot. But it's always very hot. Okay, Brian's looking up something real quick. Yeah, yeah That's a check. question. Um, how much rain did water did we store up in our rain catchers? Oh, yeah. Um, what did I say was the standard... Um, I gotta go back to my notes. Um, rain catchers... I think I wrote it on the original one, but here. when I rewrote how much they could store, I think I didn't re- readjust it. Do that plus a D for. Uh, you got a total of four gallons of water. Oh, you, got, okay. you got two rain catchers, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. we have two. Uh, one of them got four, the other one got six. Uh, all right. 
How much could our buckets hold? Were they one were they gallon buckets or five one, gallons? I can't remember if we decided one gallon or five gallon. We got one we got gallon individual water skin, oh. right? And yes, then, we and did. Yes, we did. One gallon four water one gallon yeah, water skins, and then two buckets. So I'm guessing the buckets are five gallons. Probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't write that. That there. sounds like a reasonable bucket size. Um, right? All right. So yeah, I'll we'll take those two buckets and fill those up too, and then take down the rain catchers and okay. all that stuff. Okay. Cool. Um. So, I guess you like for the audience. I want to say this because I feel like yeah, it works really well. Um, so with everything that happened with Rickster, uh, the, the day before, and then this talk with Gilly, uh, it kind of works out perfectly that with leveling up, uh, Rickster gained proficiency in insight. Let's go insight. So this is kind of his, like, no, okay, this is, shit's real. Like, this isn't, like, you know, guarding a caravan and joking around with friends. This is some hardcore stuff that's maybe even more serious than other things he's done. So he's he's gonna learn how to read the room a little bit and yes. figure out how to take to you know be be aware of the situation and stuff. Right. I like it. I like yeah. it. Cool. Okay. So presentation doesn't do a thing I wanted to do. So I'm gonna have to look around for uh, particularly dry wood. <laughs> Oof. Give me a give me a survival. Sure. I think it's findable. Just give me a survival check. So wisdom. <laughs> Uh, 12. You can look, like, underneath of stuff. Like, so the, the top layers of plant life are pretty pretty wet, but some yeah. have really soaked through to the bottom. And you can find a little bit of, like, dried grasses and stuff okay. if you are really hunting for it. As I see something they tin, uh, kindling with and sure. kind of put it near the mound of corpses and use the presentation <clears throat> to catch yeah, on fire. Yeah. So it takes you a little bit of time mm-hmm. to find the materials and, and stack the bodies in a way, you know, you got to have, like, the little... Wall. Like log cabin shaped, less an air in, <laughs> and kind of bodies overlapping bodies, and you know that kind of stuff. And they got joints, well, so you got to turn them upside down so the joints aren't working against you. Um, but you can you can get it, and you can set fire to the bodies. They burn. Uh, they're pretty moist. Um, Smoky. Yeah, it's it stinks a whole lot. But yeah, you guys are able you're able to to burn the bodies, burn the corpses. Hopefully that doesn't attract anything. But I guess we're leaving. So that's okay. Yeah, let's let's get everything in that's the why I waited. Get out of here. That's why I waited. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you guys can get back on your canoes and do your thing. Uh, I'm gonna have. Uh, who who do you want to have? Do your survival check for your navigation. Um, I mean, I think we are still going with Iku because yeah, it makes the most so. okay. sense because yeah. she's our guide. All right. I, so, I mean, don't disagree. I'm just asking the question. So let me double check. She her. dies. It's probably going to end up being me or Rixer because mm-hmm. I think we have the, the highest survivals. Yeah. Four, and I think you said you have the same. I have three. Oh, okay. I, think. I have three. Do you have three? Mm-hmm. So the three of us. All right. <laughs> Four plus guidance. <laughs> oh, yeah. People put guidance. So you guys are on, on the road, so to speak, um, and again. there's real, really no uh, precipitation. Um, it's just kind of a g- generally hot, but again, like you're under the canopy more or less, uh, so really not as hot as it had been right. out in the open at Port Nine Zero. Um, and all things considered, it's actually be it's, your morning tr- goes by quite peacefully. What is, are your passive perceptions, though? 14. Uh, 16. 16. 13. What's Eve's passive perception? What's perception based on? Wisdom. Wisdom. Cool. And she's proficient in perception. Is she? It's 10 plus her proficiency plus her oh. modifier. I got that. Okay. Oh, I thought it was only your proficiency if you were trained in it. If you're trained in it, it does add your mm-hmm. proficiency. Okay, yeah. sorry, I missed her. My bad. So, Rixer and Gilly do not notice this, but okay. um, kind of about the same time, uh, Iku and Brielle and Mountwood are able to kind of like snap their heads up and kind of look through the, the trees to the sky above. And you see four 
um, enormous, at first you think they're birds, um, brightly colored, um, uh, you know, huge wingspans, kind of long, um, long hooked beaks. And then you realize that they're, they're actually like a humanoid creatures, like winged flying, flying above you, uh, with great big kind of carrying spears. Um, and they're kind of like flying in two sets of two. Um, and when you listen closely, you can almost t tell they're kind of talking to each other as they kind of fly overhead. And they kind of do a few circles. Um, and once you've seen them, you can kind of see that they're like checking you guys out. They're not getting any closer. They're not really being aggressive per se. Um, but you definitely do get the sense that they have seen you. And this is before we've gotten in the canoes? Nope, this is, you've been in the canoe oh, for probably an hour or two okay. at okay. least. Um, Braille's gonna not draw her bow, but she's gonna have her hand like near her bow that's sitting next to her in the boat, but she's not gonna, just in case something gets aggressive. Basically, I'm readying an action if they try to attack us. Sure. Would Gilly notice Brielle kind of getting in a stance of ready? Prob. Um, we're in the same know. boat, right? Yeah. Yeah, you are in the same boat. She... And you know me well enough. Yeah, you'd see her like putting her hand on her bow while like looking up at the sky. Okay. Uh, Gilly will sign. What's up? And she literally, <laughs> with the other hand that's not reaching for her bow, point up. Do yawns and stretches and looks up at the sky and sees the things. <laughs> um, once it's obvious that you guys at least see it, because Mount Wooden is on a different, on a different canoe mm -hmm. than Iku. It's like, I wonder if they're friendly. <laughs> um, Iku uh, definitely notices that you put your hand on your bow. And she'll kind of like put her hand, like kind of like not like put her on your hand, but like on it backwards, and like do not do not be afraid. They are they are friends, and she will just kind of like wave a little bit at them. Um, what would waves? Rickster kind of looks her up, slowly waves. One of them. One of them. No, no, he doesn't see him yet. <laughs> one of them gives kind of like an awkward like like little like half wave like hey, kind of back. <laughs> Uh, and Iku will say to you that they are nothing to be feared. Those are, are Arakokra from Kirsabal. They are. They seem to be far from their far from their temples, but I'm sure they are just uh, scouting the jungle to make sure things stay safe. They um, seem to have a pretty good view of everything. The view from up, up above is quite exquisite, I'm sure. Hey! <laughs> they learned something about them at one point. Do you wave them down? Yeah, I start gesturing for them to come down. Or at least one of them. Um, yeah, um, you can kind of see, like, uh, they all kind of, like, look towards uh, the one that waves that you guys begin with. Um, and then he very quickly descends uh, through the... <clears throat> they got room on, we got room on our boat. Uh, descends through the little mm -hmm. bit of the, the, the canopy. Um, and the four of them kind of like flap their enormous wings and they're kind of like hovering in place a little bit mm -hmm. above above you. Whoa. Um, and now that you're... What? I don't uh, know. Now that you're close, uh, you can definitely get a good look at them. And... Those are Eric Kakra from Kir Sabal. Where's that? I don't know. That's what Iku said. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's what she was talking about? <laughs> oh my. Oh, wow, they wow. look really oh. cool here. Uh, I look like bad that a lot. <laughs> yep, you can see that their wings have got a mixture of uh, deep reds and blacks. Um, and then, like I said, you can kind of see a mixture of brightly colored greens and yellows in their feathers mm -hmm. with their kind of large hooked beaks. Um, and their tail's white. Yep, they've got a white, a long white tail flowing behind them. And all four of them are carrying a very, very long, um, primitive looking spears. I can't tell. Is it just like feathers that are like sticking up off the back of his head, or is he wearing something? I think he's wearing something, like a headdress of some kind. I'm truthfully not sure. Is okay. it the same color? Yeah, his his head crest is the same color yellow as his um kind of robe, robe, thing. robe yeah. thing. Okay, cool. That's how he tracks mates. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, 
the one the one that had waved um, definitely seems like he's maybe the one that's in charge here. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say, Iku, it is good to see you. It has been too long. You haven't been by the temple in, in a very long time. And Iku just kind of will shrug uh, and say, oh yes, well, my my my, pa my path is not always my own. I, I go where I am most, most needed. And uh, that seems to satisfy the, the air coker, and he just kind of kind of nods. Um, and then Iku says, "These are my these are my friends. This is this is uh, Brielle right here, and, and and Gilly. And then on the other other canoe we have Mountwood, and we have Rixer. Hi. Uh, the Rixer says hi, and then the, the air coker will just kind of nod. Um, and he's going to ask, "What what brings you all to the this this far into the jungles?" We're gonna go see grandmother. She's she's not really our grandma, <laughs> but she's gonna help us. He's nodding and accepting what you're saying. Oh, well, I hope you can uh, hope you can find your grandmother. Yeah, Iku knows where she's at. Uh, and Iku will will tell him that uh, you, you are headed towards uh, the Oracle at Oralanga, and he will just say, "Well, good luck on your journey." Did you guys have anything particular? Um, I mean, you you waved them down. I went, yeah, I did. I actually about that wanted to because they have a, a a bird's eye view, so to speak. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, now, on that topic, since you can kind of see our intended and you know our intended destination, are we on course? Um, he'll tell you that. Uh, well, you have ways to go along. Uh, along this river, but by and large, yes, you seem to be going in the right okay, direction. So we haven't gotten lost. <laughs> he'll he'll <laughs> laugh and say that's very hard. It's very hard to get lost on the river, but uh, if this was if this is the path you're choosing to take, it will it will certainly get, take you there. Is there anything down the river we should be aware of? Uh, well, he'll tell you that um, uh, he's seen a lot of. Of undead uh, further further down the river, um, that the, the the quantity of undead in the forest will definitely get thicker the further you go. I don't like undead. <laughs> um, Me either. Just stay in the ground where they belong. <laughs> Let me look up a thing because of course, Ryan, you're asking me about stuff that you guys don't touch for several. <laughs> Several more sessions. Yeah, that seemed like a good opportunity. I'm like, no, absolutely. Why? That's actually a really smart thing. I had the same thoughts. <laughs> um, Will you hand me Rixer's mini? Oh, I just want to put everybody on the boats. Could we put the um, Audacity back up? Oh, That's yeah, right. you might want to do that. That's a very pretty sorry. picture, but no, don't be sorry. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. Um, he's going to tell you that. Uh, the the outsiders camp at the um, house of the crocodile has has been overrun by the undead. Um, so when you pass by, you may want to be wary of uh, of, of what you may find. Um, as far as we we want to tell you that we we didn't land um, and we didn't approach to get too close. But it looked like the outsiders have have all but been driven into the jungle or killed. The outsiders camp in the house of the crocodile. Um, Iku will kind of translate, oh, um, okay. and she'll tell you that uh, the well, the Order of the Gauntlet they set up they set up a camp uh, at the base of the house of the crocodile, which which is a, a large, um, enormous temple, really. Um, along the river's river's edge, um, they named it Camp Righteous because, of course, they did. <laughs> um, it is always distressing to hear about the loss of life, but last time I was by there, that camp was very poorly defended, and I did I did greatly worry about their safety. Hmm. But you'll be able to recognize when we get close. Oh my! The uh, the house of the crocodile. Is is it is truly enormous? It is 
on you cannot miss it when we go by. Okay. That must be a big crocodile that lives there then. <laughs> there uh, are crocodiles that make make themselves at home along the shores of the river there. Um, but the crocodile itself, uh, the statue is, it is very large. Why does the statue need a house? I don't get it. The statue is a house. It's a, oh. I, I believe it may be an ancient tomb of some sort. Oh. Okay. I've never yeah, been inside myself. We're looking for a tomb. <laughs> <laughs> That was my character I did not do the voice. <laughs> so yeah, that's really the only I don't know, updates or news of what they they, they really have. Otherwise the okay. jungle is always full of treacherous creatures. Um and they always be wary. Fair enough. Ryan or anybody else, you guys have any else for them? Um No, that was about it. Um well, th- thank you for the heads up and the uh, information. Um, uh, yeah. Shake hands. <laughs> um, you put your hand out to shake, and they also kind of put their hands out in mm-hmm. front of them, and they shake their hands out in the air. Hey, culture! <laughs> All right, well, Iku, it was good, of course, seeing you, as always. Mm-hmm. And she'll just kind of nod, and they take flight mm-hmm. and kind of go back. The way they came, essentially. Yeah. They're nice. Yeah, they they seem really nice. So helpful. So beautiful. Uh, equal will, will say yes. They they are most striking. They are very kind and, and helpful people. Um, if our if our journey had taken us past Kier Sabal, I'm sure we would have stopped. I would have made sure to be stopped there to to meet them, but. They are on the other side of the jungle, so unless our our plans change once we've reached the Oracle, um, this may have been our only chance to meet them. Wow. That's too bad. <laughs> well, you're welcome for calling them down. Yeah, thank you for that opportunity, Motlet. That's a good idea. Brianna will make smart. that thank you sign. Mm-hmm. I, I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> did, she do the, did she do the... Or the it was, it was thank you. Okay, she okay, not the you. other one. <laughs> no, not the other one. <laughs> Which one's the other one? Mm, don't worry about it. <laughs> Wait, who are you talking to? What? Yeah. Cool. Who? So you guys uh, roll on again for several more hours. Um, you're, if, if necessary, you're able to like take some light meals kind of like on the boat or on the canoes, you know, for eating lunch or... Or whatever. Yeah, fish and sticks. Fish sticks. Mm. Fish sticks. <laughs> uh, if if you want to role play getting off to like you know use the bathroom or something, I don't want to do that. So. Mm. <laughs> Make sure doesn't get off the boat. Um. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Without a paddle in it. I don't know sides, which way do you face. Name. Yeah, which way do you face? Spell um, people's names. He, he don't look left or right. Oh. <laughs> Right. I mean, you're rowing, okay. so... Yeah. Well, he would, like, face towards the bank. <laughs> Not, like, pee towards the other boat. <laughs> um, You're getting pee on me. It's me. Right around, right around midday. Oh, no. Um, as you guys are, are you know, row, row, rowing your boats. Yep. Mm-hmm. Gently down this river. river uh, you hear a fair amount of, um rustling and grunting just off uh, just kind of ahead of you in the in the tree line um would it be perception or survival to try to like figure out what noise they are like rickster would think that it's like an animal noise that's why i'm asking asked about survival if you want to try to like identify what the sounds are you're hearing like in terms of like what natural animal whatever's, mm-hmm. you can throw me a survival. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Brianna will do one of those as well. Oh, Twenty-one. Good. Twenty. Okay. Both of you. Um, this doesn't sound like an animal. You're hearing 
uh, a lot of like a lot of movement, a lot of bones breaking, but like the, so, some of the grunts and, and and noises you're hearing begin to sound like uh, people talking in a language you don't understand, a very kind of guttural, pr uh, primitive language. Uh, Gilly will lean towards Iku and say, How often do things from the jungle encroach on river passers-by? It, it depends on what, the, what it is. Um, then what's that sound? She will, um, <laughs> it's a... Well, it sounds like those are, those are... Um, probably humans, uh, or at least, hmm, yeah, totally humans. Uh, oh, those are, there are many tribes of cannibals that live in the jungle. Oh, no, thank you. And, and she begins to kind of like listen a lot more closely, kind of nodding her head. I can hear, you know, I roll for the numbers. There are, there are a lot of them. Um, perhaps I'm hearing at least six to eight, maybe more voices, distinct voices. Um, they're talking about this, whatever it is they're eating. Uh, she's kind of listening to it more as you guys are kind of paddling on getting closer. Um, it sounds like they just perhaps just recently killed some zombies and they're tearing them apart to eat them. Okay, so... What's a camel? She, you, you yell us, of course, to the other boat. No! Um, <laughs> what's a camel? What, what's a camel? Raquel's just putting your finger up, like, And Gilly, like, Aggressively. Sinks. <laughs> aggressively. Like, to the bottom of the canoe, Be as much as possible. <laughs> Rick's her, um... Rixer, you hear a voice tell you very, very clearly um, that a cannibal is a a person who eats other people, but we need to be quiet now and try to sneak past them. You hear that. Oh, okay. The rest of you guys hear nothing. Right. Okay. We're just going to, like, sit up straighter and, like, row a little bit faster. Um, and you hear another voice saying, Real quieter. Give like me a stealth check. Very purposefully. But and still trying to be quick, I guess. Iku's rowing? Is Iku rowing this? Oh. Um, is that number? You guys want her Iku rowing this. Yeah, yeah. 14. Iku's rowing. Yeah, Iku totally rowing. <laughs> With the number I just rolled, you want Iku to be rowing this. Um, And she kind of like goes into a very rhythm of like keeping her, or the oars kind of deep and then like pulling them slowly. And you guys keep keep moving at more or less the same pace. Oh, we didn't determine your speed of travel today, so I'll assume it's just normal. normal. Just normal. Yeah, just normal. Um, I would just assume that as long as we don't say fast or slow, it's probably just cool. normal. So your your canoe with the eco in it go, begins to go very, very quietly. Dana, what would you say you got? 14. Let me actually roll theirs. Hey. Um, you guys kind of like go past the sounds, the gruntings, the bone snappings. Um... The, the very simple guttural languages. Um, and it takes a little while for it to be told. Like, you can get to a point where it's clearly just, like, 20 feet that way. Like, just the, past the edge. You can pinpoint it. You can see shapes kind of in the underbrush. Um, and it's, but they don't seem to be aware of you guys. And you seem to be able to kind of, like, bypass them completely. Can I make a perception check to clearly make them out so if we see them in the future, we know that they're that's what they are? Sure. See if I can. Oof! No, that's pretty bad. Uh, that's only a nine. I mean, they're not trying to be stealthy exactly, but they're just they're just too they're... far away from the edge of the river. That's fine. Plus, you guys are more or less in the center, and you just don't have a right. good line of sight. That's fine. I was just hoping to sure be able to remember them in the future. So not a lot of time passes. Um, I mean, this whole thing takes. Uh, you're going to the river, you're rowing, so it probably takes 15, 20 minutes to really get past this entire thing, so you can't see or hear anything anymore. Um, but before you know it, you guys seem to be pretty much in the clear. 
as the sounds start to fade, Gilly will sit back up. Um, and Iku will, will eventually say, okay, it seems as if we have passed them. Uh, they they probably would not have, have attempted to uh, to assault us, being as we're on the river, but they, they have been known to carry poison-tipped arrows and spears, so we, we may have been able to dodge something potentially deadly. Anything you guys want to say or do? Uh, or? Once, once it gets, like, the all clear, Hector's like... <gasps> <laughs> and like slouches a little bit <laughs> and starts rowing like normal. Okay. Um. So you guys row on. You row on for the rest of the day until it starts to become close to nighttime. Mm-hmm. Um. And as as it's getting getting close to probably what you'd want to make make camp and stop for the night. Um. You guys come across. You can. See it in the distance, really. Uh, up on the pulled up onto the, the the bank of the river, you see two canoes, much like yours, but uh, um, you don't see other people around. Oh, I don't like that. Make um, a perception check to see if I can see if there is anybody. Hiding, or if I see anybody sure. dead. Sure, and, and I'll say you guys are, I don't know, say 100 or so feet away from... Oh, I'd so make this once we get a little bit closer, but... Okay, how, how close before you want to start throwing this? Mm. I'd probably say maybe 50 feet. Same. Okay. Uh, R- Rickster's going to make the quiet hand signal that they were practicing, and like automatically start rolling, uh, rolling, geez, rowing quieter again. With a oh jeez, that's only nine for spells. Iku well, kind of just takes your lead and does the same, just because you thought it was a good idea. Oof, your canoe is going way quieter than theirs. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Frick's making an attempt, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you guys get for your perceptions? Uh, I got fifteen. Eighteen. So you guys are about fifty feet away. Um, and. You can see, you cannot see any people. Is there a fire? Um, but up a little bit further, up a little bit further off the edge, up the edge of the riverbank, um, you can see what looks to be like a, a crude camp, not okay. too different than what you guys had what set up the night doing? before. You saw this too, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with an. Then 18, I will. I will reiterate that to you to. Tell everyone else since you already yeah, saw. Yeah, you see basically. The same I thing. probably signed. Did you, did you see that? And then yeah. let you reiterate to the group. Uh, I just quietly camp ahead. Um, Gilly will sign to Brielle. Do we find our own way, or try to make friends? I think we should find our own way. Well, you would know that Brielle doesn't really trust people too often. Right. So she's not going to want to stop. Um, she would suggest that we continue up where we're a little bit past them mm-hmm. and set up our own camp. Yeah. Or, yeah. or stop, if there's a clear spot, stop before we get to them. Yeah. Do we see any spot that's clear near where we're at? I mean, or... again, you're you know about 50 feet away kind of coming up on it, um, but... Yeah, I mean the the bank is clear enough that you could pull up pretty much anywhere. I would I would suggest um, she would say talk to Iku, see if we should pull off if this would be a fine spot to pull off, and we should pull off here, hide our canoes so they don't see them, and then in the morning we wait till they leave before we go up river. Yeah. Iku, is here a good place to stop? We'd like to stop before those canoes ahead of us. Um, and, um, Gilly will put up the slow down sign. Okay. And Fixer slows down. Sure. Kind of is, like, watching them. Like, the, um, the exchange between Iku and Gilly to try to gain context clues in their conversation <laughs> about what he should Can be doing. gauge what we're... Yeah. yeah. Sure. Iku's gonna kind of, like, um, she sits up 
and is really like you can see her really scanning scanning the shoreline both sides of the river really mm -hmm. and well i think if we if we were to turn around and go back um not too far we could probably get a good a good landing spot between here and there it's not bad we could definitely get out and pull out if you want to make camp maybe we passed something it shows kind of i don't know just not even a quarter mile down the other way all right okay. um Brielle, Brielle, will, yeah. Brielle will stand up and turn towards Rixer and make a couple hand signs and basically spin her finger around letting her know, or letting him know, that we should turn around. Sure. Okay. Um, and you guys are able to do that. Like, I'm not going to make you make craft handling it's checks. Very mm -hmm. enough to, yeah, yeah, and it's a very, very slow-moving river. Right. So, like, you have actually, it's actually a little bit easier now, because now you're going back with this slow-moving river, oh, right. whatever yeah. it's worth. Uh, and, and you go down a little ways, probably about not quite a quarter of a mile, and you're able to, she kind of gestures a good place to kind of pull off. I don't know if you want to wait until... It'll be fine. Okay. I, I, I got you, but I don't want to wait for the random neighbor noises to stop. <laughs> I think it's the next guy's yeah. truck. Yeah. So you guys are able to pull your pull your canoes up and get, uh, get out, um, and it's a decent spot to make camp. It's got a big enough gap between the trees. Um, not totally, di un you know, unlike the one you were at the night before. Okay. Uh, Brielle would like to kind of go up to the to the forest a little bit and start pulling off branches and stuff, sure. and begin hiding the canoe so if anybody else comes along the river after us, they don't see our stuff. Give me a. I don't know, survival or stealth, or however you want to do this. What are the trees like in this area? Like, are the are the cool. limbs like just like really high up, like you know, like tall, tall trunk, and then high up limbs, or are there any like shorter ones? Um, most of them are kind of like not super. Because I guess like I'm wondering if we'll be able to like essentially use the trees to help hide the canoes. Well, that's what like, she's doing. Like, oh, no, but, like, oh, you mean like like to like pick it up on its end and like almost put it behind the tree or like in, in the, the tree trees. so it is very well hidden you you could probably find trees that you know will work for that if that's what you want to do um well whenever Brielle starts to like cover up the canoes Rixer will go over and do I could put them in the trees we can hide them that way she looks up a tree like and then she points like in the tree and there's no point to like a shorter one and like like behind it. Um she kind of does like a clever thing to you and uh she gonna says smile. Good thought. This is gonna give a big smile, like okay. And he like just picks up a canoe like nothing and walks up. Brielle will pick up the other one. Not as <laughs> elegantly as that would be, but she'll pick up another one, kinda of drag it off and then um, she will double up with that idea, though, and still put brush around it just right. to double. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, which, she only got a 10 on the, the stealth to hide them, but it, it's not I mean, bad. Yeah, like, if you're not really paying attention, you're not really Can working, I, like, a lot of people probably won't. Assist? Can I help with that? So sure. that sure. Oh, would I that roll? That would just give me advantage. Yeah. yeah. If you want to do that, unless yep. you want to roll, too. It's fine. It's a little bit better. Uh, it's a 13. Um, so, yeah, so, like, it's not, like, the most amazing job in, ever, um, and, you know, Brielle is thinking, oh, this isn't too bad, and Richard can kind of, like, walk up and kind of point out a few things in between the two of you. You make it so, you know, if someone doesn't come by who's really, really paying attention, they right. probably won't see them. Okay. And so, um, how far back are we away from where that camp was? Just we over were, like, a quarter mile. Yeah, a okay. quarter mile. Um, and then, I'm trying to think if Rixer would know if Gilly is stealthy at all or not. I don't think I She's not bad. Uh, I don't do She doesn't check. have stealth, but sure. she's got a plus two die. Uh, geez, 14 plus 3 is 17? Do you remember the times yeah. that she just disappears? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I'm easily over. Gilly is easily overlooked because she's so short. Mm -hmm. Um, so if 
she typically does not try to be stealthy, but if she needs to be so- stealthy, she will try her best. Um, so Rixer will go to Gilly. Should we, well, no, should you, you know, you're, you're small, go and see who's making camp up ahead so that we know and if we need to be on extra guard tonight? Are we still within the range of my coal stone being allowed? Uh, I just had my map out. I just plotted the exact location. <sighs> Definitely not. Damn. I get bonuses for stealthing <laughs> by right. myself. I mean, you're about 40 miles in from the coastline. Oh, wow. We're pretty far now. I mean, on the canoe, you're, you're in 20 miles a day. Right. You guys, um, okay. you have the perfect scout. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was my next suggestion. Yeah. Um, I, I, w- I would rather, rather not, but my little mouse friend, maybe. And by my little mouse friend, I mean Mark Wood's little mouse friend. <laughs> Patrol of the oh. skulls. <laughs> looks, looks, I mean, I'm concerned. That, I bet you real would like to say something. Once. <laughs> I'm, I've got more spike fruit. We do it, we do it for a spike fruit. Uh... <laughs> Twelve just starts nodding his head rapidly. Raho, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Rixer will get out a, a spike root and give half of it to Twelve. You can get the uh, other half later. I'm sorry, Ryan, if I'm taking over. Oh your, no, that's fine. I'm taking over your. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't, I don't know if he eats or not. That's the he whole. Thing. Totally puts his head in the spike root <laughs> <laughs> and gobbles it right down. Nice. He's even like like. Like a little beach ball, just kind of like roly poly for a few <laughs> seconds until the scene wipe happens. Mm-hmm. He's back to normal. Um, I completely defied all laws of physics I'm aware of. <laughs> he burps. <laughs> um, speaking of maps, should we be marking on our big map where we are at? I've been thinking about that. Well, if you guys want to know where you're at, get up I, and get in. I think, I think we should yeah. do that. Maybe after we're done with this recording yeah, session, we can okay, grab it. Yeah. So, what exactly is 12 doing? Uh, so we know it's a quarter of a mile. Which way? Uh, south. South, yeah. right. south of, yeah. So I can instruct them to go uh, a quarter of a mile south uh-huh. to scout this camp, see if they're... Well, actually, I can just put my own vision into him. So I can, at, that, at that range? Yeah, the vision goes for... I can only like mentally while, but command you them. Mentally command them. I can't mentally command them past 100 feet. Yeah. But from what I understand, you can send your yeah. vision perspective. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, cool. So basically, like he he's running on his own at that point mm-hmm. on your yep. previous orders, but yep. you can still see through his eyes. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's really cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So you let him go. Um, mm-hmm. It's going to take him a little while. He's pretty yeah. small. It's going to take him some time. Like, he, he's quick, but. What are you guys doing in the meantime? I'm, I'm assuming that that Mott was going to kind of sit there and just kind of watch. Through his rat's eyes. Right. Good set, night, everybody. Uh, <laughs> set up camp and try to keep it as obscured as possible from the river line. I might be dead. <laughs> okay. Um, and you won't be dead. Twelve will be dead. Collectively, as a group, as you're stealthily setting up this camp, give me stealth checks just to, to see how well you're doing this. Man, my diet is oh. not working today. That's a 10. No, sorry. That's, no, yep, 10. Uh, I think mine is a 10 as well, yep. I will round out with another 10. Wow, you guys are perfectly average. <laughs> cool, that's easy well, to work you. with. I am unconscious. I mean, you're conscious. You're just like... Coming close. Um, so while they're setting up camp, um, Rick's... Or, I'm sorry, Motwood, you're able to, to, to watch the rat's eyes. Yeah. And, it, again, it takes a little bit of time, but eventually he gets to the edge of the clearing um, where this camp is and you don't see anybody in fact now that you're like kind of on ground level getting closer there's a, a fire pit that's, it looks I don't know it looks the ash is white you know like there's no active fire in there um, you see a total of three tents one of which has been completely smashed um oh. See right now, I can't. I can't command twelve to go to do any of this. He's totally doing his own thing. Um, he he goes over to a. Um, I can only see what he sees. <laughs> yep, he goes up to a backpack that's just kind of like laying mm-hmm. on the ground next to the smash tent, um, 
and it looks like there's some like food in there that he quickly kind of like gets into and starts gobbling on mm-hmm. um, until he seems to be done, done eating. And then like he just kind of like wanders around, and as he's wandering around, you can see that this there were people here. Um, you see, a, you know, a, a short sword just kind of like sitting, like you know, fifteen twenty feet away from the fire, just laying there. Um, there's all kinds of like dirt kicked up, and then after a little bit, twelve thinks he's finished your command. He starts heading back your way. When that effect ends, uh, and my consciousness returns to my body, uh, I'll use the uh, five familiar feature to just return back to my uh, okay. side. That's pretty so, cool. Well, um, back. <laughs> he seems yeah. a little bit shocked and like looks around and like <laughs> looks at you and then like shrugs and just goes back to his normal way. Rex gives him the other half of the spike crew. What's the deal? He came back to get the other half. <laughs> he jumps into it and like. It just starts gobbling it. Yeah. And when he's done, once again, he's all like like a balloon, like yeah. overfed, and rolls around a little bit until you look away. And he looks, you look back, and he's back to normal. So, Rickster gets out another spider. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will reiterate what I saw. I'll say, um, compared to my own interpretation here, uh, I'll say, looks like uh, they uh, abandoned camp. Um, there was some signs of movement. Don't know if that was a uh, sign of fighting or anything, but they left their weapons and survival gear. Why would you abandon camp and leave your weapons? Not, not a unless good thing. Brielle will chime up and say one of the corpses of the zombies that I found mm-hmm. didn't have the triangle mark on it, and may have only been dead for a week. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. And Gilly just reiterates that with the group. So in my head, doesn't mean that's true. Dana's head or Richard's head? <laughs> Dana's head, okay. okay. Visually, I have pictured whenever we stopped for camp, uh, the other time we stopped on the left side of the bank, and at this time we've stopped on the left, on the right side? Is that correct? Incorrect? Does that... Well, in my head, you stopped on the left both times, but... Okay. That's how I was... Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's what I was visualizing yeah. as well. Man, why did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that, that though, then makes sense of, like, that yeah. could be the case and he wandered over, because the first thing I thought was, like, how do you get across the river? And then I realized we never specified the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Took a boat. <laughs> right. That's funny, that's funny. Uh, after sharing Brielle's... Uh, observation with the group, uh, Billy will chime in again and say, I don't think they abandoned camp. If I had to abandon and run from this camp, I would take my weapon with me. Right, that that makes I, sense. So you think they were taken? Or killed. Brielle's going to sit down while everybody's talking and start meditating. She's going to cast... Primeval Awareness, okay. which uh, I can use my action and expend one of my spell slots to focus uh, my awareness on the region around me for one minute for the spell slot that I spend. Um, I can sense whether the following types of creatures are present within one mile. Okay. Six miles if I'm in my favorite terrain, but we're out of that now. Sure. Uh, Aberrations, Celestials, Dragons, Elementals, Fays, Fiends, and Undead. Read that list again, please. Aberrations, Celestials, Dragons, Elementals, Fays, Fiends, and Undead. It's like my Eyes of the Grave only turned to 11. Yeah. There's definitely Undead. I don't, oh, also, I don't know the creature's location or their numbers. Okay. Are, but I just know that they're within a mile. They are definitely undead within a mile. I figured. And there, you also pick up Celestial. Interesting. It's 12. <laughs> <laughs> celestial. That's interesting. No, you use a Celestial Rat. So that takes her a minute, so you guys can keep with your conversation, because mm-hmm. she's not going to chime up for a minute. That's fair. I guess... You guys just kind of see her plot down while you're talking and go into a meditative state. Yeah. 
You oh. have never seen her do this before. Gilly just instinctively sits down. <laughs> like, okay. That's weird. Are we supposed to? It's the guy that falls cold. I I mean I I, I would. Yeah, I mean you've never seen oh. it yourself. Oh, okay. Victor like slowly sits down. It's like the exact same pose that Brielle's in. And just watching her intently, like, what am I supposed to do next? Gilly is just scanning the surroundings to make sure nothing. Iku looks a little bit confused, but sits down too, because you guys are sitting down. <laughs> but is also, like, kind of got her, her walking stick kind of, like, kind of, like, held at the ready, like... Now we're just so here we are. a bunch of jackasses yeah, sitting, sitting around, around in a circle. <laughs> in a circle. <laughs> like a bunch of jackasses. Um, after the minute... Brielle will come out of her meditative state and then look really confused why everybody's copying. <laughs> copying her. And then, uh... Well, it shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then she will sign to Gilly that there, there's definitely... I've, I've been meditating and taking in my surroundings. Oh. And there's definitely undead within a mile of here. But I also picked up something odd. Okay. Celestial? Okay, so that's, uh, Brielle's, she meditates to figure out the land around us, and within a mile there's definitely undead, and also some, some things, or some things, celestial? Like an angel? Yeah, Yeah. Brielle will sign and shake her head yes. That's, that's kind of cool. Um, I've never met one she'll, before. And then she'll look at Iku. Really? There as you have. As Gilly's reiterating this to see if that... Pulls a pull. If she has a reaction to the Celestial oh. comment with an insight. Pulls a Celestial? Yeah. Oh. What? She is going to be very just like Isn't blank okay? based. I get to choose. Nice. <laughs> and like, at first I wasn't sure if you were joking insight. or not. I am totally not. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty good. I chose Celestial when I chose... 21. Nice. Iku is definitely not responding to you at all. Like, totally just like blank face. Okay. So um, okay. But it's very obvious huh. that she's nice. just totally I mean, does that really faced. affect like, anything? <clears throat> really. I point that out to Gilly. I'm like... She's not reacting to this conversation whatsoever. I see that. 12's also a Celestial. Yeah, Did you say that? Yeah, because... Yeah. He's a steer guide. <laughs> Does Kyle know that? <laughs> mm, but game. but for now, she might just trigger that, but... I, think that I mean, there could be, okay. you know, could be multiple selections. Right, because you know, the, the, the only thing is, is, and she's aware that she doesn't know where they're located. So mm-hmm. it could be, yeah. it could be that, but she's still going to... So let me tell, ask you this. <clears throat> with with Ryan's rat being uh, celestial and you know, Mountwood saying that oh twelve is you know do you outright ask what, what do you actually say to Iku? I mean I can't say anything to Iku. Oh that's right that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you tell me? What do, yeah? How I does, mean, uh, I would ask Gilly if she to. To ask Iku if she knows of anything that is celestial in this in this jungle. And then also Brielle's going to bust out that Volo's book and she's going to start flipping through and Iku, looking for anything. Do you know anything that would be celestial in this jungle? Um, she's going to say to you that there are, there are, there are a lot of, there, there are many ancient and powerful creatures that call this jungle home. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can hear what she's saying. <laughs> yeah, but still, Gilly's just gonna like shrug. Um, yeah, Brielle's gonna shrug. She's gonna as well, and um, she's gonna keep looking through the book and see if there's anything in there. But uh, the fact that twelve is celestial kind of puts her more at ease that there's something bigger out there. But. She's also not taking that out of perspective that there could be 
something celestial. Ryan out has there. a theory. <laughs> yeah, so does man. But Ryan goes jungle plus celestial equals quattro. Oh yeah. <laughs> a couple. That was annoying, but didn't think about that. <clears throat> All right, that would be cool. Those things are awesome. <laughs> I think we've got a lot of mysteries on our hand right now. We have a possibly abandoned campsite. We have a mysterious celestial creature that uh, is within a mile of the heroes. It's potentially not 12. <laughs> it might not be 12. Yeah. It might be more than one. Mm-hmm. It, might, it, it might, might be 12. It, it <laughs> might be Iku. It, it might, might be 12. <laughs> Perhaps. There might be 12. Mm-hmm. There might be 12. Oh, snap. There's at least a 12. Maybe mm-hmm. there's more than 12. <laughs> Numbers! <laughs> so... As always, thank you for for ha- uh, for joining us at our table. Um, if you are interested in the weird, wacky, ridiculous things we do, you can follow us on the social medias at uh, I don't know Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yep. That's yep. probably it. Your face. Uh, <laughs> search for Monday Night TPK. You'll probably find us. Sometimes we retweet, um, you know, D and D themed memes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes Matt posts pictures of, uh, well, pictures he takes from our games. Mm -hmm. So, see what happens. Um, But we're at a close here. Until next week, uh, have a good night. Some kind of ultra speed. Whoa. That was cool, dude. We just summoned Cthulhu.